audience here this evening. And while you're turning there, I'm going to say uh, thank you for coming. We appreciate all y'all preachers, Brother Chris, Brother Danny Johnson, and of course Brother Ronnie, and uh, other preachers that maybe I don't know that are here tonight. Uh, I know it's uh, hard for you to get loose on Friday night like this, and I thank you for coming. Now, tomorrow night, the service is at 6 o'clock, right, Pastor? We'll be back tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. So you bring somebody with you. We're looking forward to that. And then uh, on the 19th, begin the, what we call the Carolina Camp Meeting. We invite all of you people up to come. You can come on the 20th, 21st, 22nd, and 3rd Friday and Saturday and get free food. We're going to have a big meal after the morning services and have as many preachers as we can preach. Uh, and uh, looking for a great time. And the Rock and Light Choir that was up here a minute ago, along with a bunch more, uh, we'll be singing that night uh, on Friday night, the 21st. Friday night, 21st. If God's will, and we done got them a place to stay, and we're going to spend the night, yeah. and we're going to have a big time in the Lord. Yeah. So put that down. Now tonight, take your Bible and First Thessalonians, and I'm going to give you an overview of the book of First Thessalonians, the whole thing. And so if you'll listen, you might want to write these things down um, as we go through them, but I'd like you to look at First Thessalonians, and the theme of First Thessalonians undoubtedly is the coming of the Lord. And the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Ghost, writes these little five short chapters, and I'm going to preach on that tonight, living in the light of the Lord's return. Now, look here in 1 Thessalonians, and I want you to look at chapter 1. In chapter 1, the whole chapter ends in verse 10. Look at verse 10. You see that chapter? It ends with a word about the coming of the Lord. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us, thank God, from the wrath to come. Yep. Now look at chapter 2. This chapter also ends with a word about the coming of the Lord. Look at verse 19. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye, Paul tells these people, are our glory and joy. Now, chapter 3 also ends with a note on the coming of the Lord. Verse 13. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Chapter 4. Then also end with these famous verses on the coming of the Lord. Look at verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore scare one another with these words. That ain't what I said it. That ain't what I said. People say, oh, don't talk about the Lord. That's scaring me. It ain't supposed to scare you. It's supposed to comfort you. Yeah. If you're right, you'll be comforted. Yeah. Let me tell you what's scary. Think about staying out here another 15, 20 years. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. But the best thing that happened tonight would be for the Lord to pull the switch and us to leave out of here yeah. and go home. But I ain't got nothing I'd rather do yeah. than go home tonight. Yeah. Yeah. One girl come to me one night and she said, don't talk about the Lord. I don't want the Lord to get back till I can get married. I thought you must be the dumbest blonde I've ever met in my life. Somebody thinks getting married is better than heaven. Tell them to marry me. It can be more like the other place. Uh, look, at, and look at chapter 5. Chapter 5 also ends with a note on the coming of the Lord. And it said this. Uh, look there in chapter number 5. And uh, look at verse, oh, let's see, we're in 23. 23 gives you a whole big list of things. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now tonight, the next event on God's calendar, the next check on God's checklist. The next uh, tick on the clock of God would be the coming of the Lord 
Lord Jesus Christ. And they, we see tonight that there's many people tonight who make fun of us for believing in the coming of the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you something tonight, people. I, I mean, if we ain't seeing the signs of the times now, I, I don't know when we ever will. Yeah. Honest to goodness, I don't, I don't know if we're ever going to see them, brother, if we ain't seeing them now. The coming of the Lord surely, surely, surely draws nigh. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you tonight, brother, it is a time that we are living in. When we value a dollar more than we do a soul, you know that Jesus is coming back. When we love a ball game more than we love a revival meeting, you know that Jesus is coming soon. We're always feeding our body, but never feeding our soul. You know that Jesus is coming. When we'd rather hear the song of fools than the old songs of Zion, we know that Jesus is coming. When we get along with the world and come and fight each other at church, you know Jesus is coming. When we respect the boss at work, but don't show disrespect to the pastor, you know that Jesus is coming. When you can close your eyes and, and can't tell if you're a honky-tonk or the church house, you know that Jesus is coming. When the stadiums are full, the churches are empty, but Jesus is coming. When 20 men will show up to play softball and you can't get two to go out and knock on doors, you know that Jesus is coming. When old-fashioned shout and hollering and singing is made fun of by Christian people, yeah. you know that Jesus is coming. Yeah. When dead intellectual reasoning replaced old-fashioned Holy Ghost Bible preaching, yeah. you know Jesus is coming. Yeah. When young people can sit in the back of the church and play on the cell phone all the time and not feel any kind of conviction of you know Jesus is coming. But if all game lasts four hours, and some of you are wondering how long we're going to sing a minute ago, you know that Jesus is coming back. When we're feasting but not fasting, when we're playing but not praying, when we're changing the Bible instead of preaching the Bible, when you pay $80, $100 to get in Disney World, and drop because the preacher gives you a choice to give a dollar, you know that Jesus is coming. When you can play bingo three nights a week, brother, and can't make a prayer bingo Wednesday night, Jesus is coming. Amen. When goes are in schools and Bibles are not, you know that Jesus is coming. When sinners are praised and preachers are mocked, you know that Jesus is coming. Brother, I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we know that the Lord is coming. Now, we had a bunch of crazy people come up about a century ago, Judge Rutherford, Pastor Russell, people like that, and they come up and they were what we call date setters. And they said, God has shown me that the Lord's coming back on such and such a day and such and such a time. And that made a lot of people scared. And people waited and waited and waited. And that day come and went and the Lord didn't go. And somebody else came up and said, the Lord told me. Uh, that, uh, some some fellow, some cult leader. And they said, uh, the Lord's coming. And they sold all their houses and lands and possessions. And they sold everything they had. Of course, they didn't believe the Lord coming. They'd just give it away with me. Uh, but they sold it all and went up on top of the mountain and waited on the Lord to come, and he didn't come. And then somebody else, that fellow out there in California, said, the Lord's coming, and he took his way to UFO, and the Lord did not come. And what that has done, it has created this atmosphere in the world that anybody who says Jesus is coming is a crackpot or some wild-eyed fanatic who don't know what they're talking about. And the Lord himself said through the Spirit of God that people would be saying that in the last day. And so the man came on time, and uh, he said, uh, Jesus said, the Lord said one time, he said, there shall come in the last day scoffers, Peter said. And he said, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, we all think, you know what they're saying? You know what he said to say? He said, we heard that all of our life. Since the mom and grandma used to say that. It ain't never come yet. Now the Lord said, when they say that, you better look up, because that's when he's coming. Yeah. See, they think you crazy Christians, you believe Jesus is coming back just any minute. Yeah, we do. They say, oh, you crazy. We ought to shut. When they say this, when they say, oh, I've heard that all my life. Go, Woo! Hallelujah. You just blessed me, son. You may not even be saved, but you encouraged me. Oh, yeah. the Lord said, you'd say that right for you. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. I just story this old woman, and you're back in the old cotton mill village, and she didn't have nothing in her, in her, in her check to run out. She didn't have no groceries. And she got down the floor and she's praying. And she was praying down at the living room floor. And she's saying, God, please send me three loaves of bread. I can feed my youngins until I get to the first of the month. And she said, Oh, God, send me three loaves. Oh, God, send me three loaves. 
Oh, oh, oh God, there's three skeptics walking up the road. I look at that young boy, about 15, 16 years old, and one of them punches him and looks like a fool in that prayer. Pray, God sits you crazy. Oh, woman like that one said, hey, I don't want to stay with you. Let's go down to the store and we'll buy free loaves of bread and we'll take back up there and sneak up on top of her house. We'll drop down that chimney and we'll turn up there in the middle of the living room floor and she'll pray, God sent that to her. They said, all right, so they went out. She's over there, oh, God. Oh, God, please. Lord, I know you can do it. They went to the store, bought three loaves of bread, come back up there, and they, they, they went over and got drunk, climbed through the tree, and snuck. They snuck up on top of that house. Uh, snuck is a Greek word you people don't yeah. know. Uh, that means they crept up privily. And they, and they come up, and they got up on top of that house, and they could hear it down there just to pray. And it was just a laughing, and one of them took one of them loaves of bread and went, ding, now we're not ding. Now we're not ding. And it fell out the floor. Lord, I'm telling you. She cut, she cut, she come unglued. That yeah. old sister got to shout, Woo! Woo! Like that. And that's what they used to do in churches. Yeah. Now, now them all some backslid watching Lifetime movies all day. Yeah. Uh, she ain't got no shout. No yeah. But it's back there, the shout. Yeah. And, left, and boy, she jumped up and she shouted, Woo! Do I got that? I said, Do I got like that? And, uh, and uh, they, they let her go in there for a minute and come knock on the door. And listen, she comes to the door and opens the door. Woo! Hallelujah! Woo! And I said, what is wrong with you? Well, she said, praise God. She said, I pray the Lord to send me three loaves of bread. And he did. He did. Look at that. No, no, crazy old boy. They said, hey, God didn't send you that. Yes, he did. Praise God. Yes. And they said, woman, listen. God didn't send you that. We're skeptics. We went down the store and bought that bread and brought it up here and broke it down your orchard. She just said, shut they said, did you hear us? She said, yeah, I did. She said, God still sent it, even if the devil didn't bring it. <laughs> and she just took a shot right there and took a shot. I'm telling you tonight, sometimes the Lord uses lost people to fulfill his word. Like he did Pharaoh, raise him up, brother, to show his power. He's coming. He's coming. Our brother would like a little boy cry wolf. You know the story of a little boy cry wolf? He come and said, the wolf's getting the sheep, wolf's getting the sheep. And everybody went out there and killed a the wolf. There wasn't no wolf. He lied, lied, lied. About two or three days later, he said, wolf, wolf. They went out there and killed a the wolf. There wasn't no wolf. He lied to lie. Two or three days later, wolf really did come. He came down there and said, wolf, wolf. They said, get out of here, man. We're sick of it. You said that and said that. We know it's a joke. And the wolf ate the sheep. That's the way it is now. Yep. That's the way it is now. He said, Lord's coming, Lord's coming. He didn't come. Watch him came. Lord's coming. He didn't come. Yeah. Lord, Lord's coming. Uh, uh, in the world. He didn't come. Guess what? He really is coming now. Yeah. He really is any day. Yeah. He might be coming before I get this preaching here tonight. But he will be snatched out of here so fast you couldn't bat your eye. I'm telling you, he is coming. One of these days. Is he going to catch you right? You're like, hey, God, I tell you, when I'm trying to drop me in one night back when Jesus said drop me And he's going to turn, he, he's real mad, had his gun, and he got, a, got the microphone in there where they can all hear in the cars. Where he's done. He said, all right, you're good for nothing. Blame the bank. Blame the bank. I know you're out there sitting with my wife. And I'm going to come out there and blow your brains out. Forty-three cars left out of the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it'll be when the Lord comes back. That's what it'll be when the Lord comes back. Amen. That's right, brother. Amen. You're going to be watching Hocus Pucus. <laughs> and don't watch Hocus Pucus if you want to be ready to meet the Lord. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't dare watch Hocus Pucus. And if you're out, that's God forgive you and clean you the demons out. Oh, yeah. I don't know where oh. that comes from. He just popped that. Yeah. Hocus Pucus. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord is coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Now in this little book here tonight, we see in chapter 1, we are waiting for His coming. We are waiting for His coming. We are not waiting on the Antichrist. 
We are waiting on the real Christ. We are not waiting looking for the undertaker. We're looking for the upper taker. We're not looking for a hole in the ground. We're looking for a hole in the sky. We ain't looking for the, uh, uh, we're not looking for a sign. We're listening for a sound. And the Lord is coming and you and I are to wait and to wait and to wait upon the Lord to come back. Yeah, you know as well as I know that it's Friday night, y'all. It's Friday night. Oh, Lord, if he come back tonight, look, how many people you think in Charlotte is looking for him tonight? Not many compared to the population. Very, very few. Very, very few. And it's coming, right? When you don't think there's a principal witness, a little fifth grade class one day, and he told all the students, he said, now listen, y'all. He said, I'm, on, I'm, I'm leaving. I got some appointments and, and phone calls and make stuff. And he said, uh, uh, he said, I'll be back during the day, sometime, sometime today. And the kid that's got the cleanest desk will get a prize. He's going to get a prize. And he turned around and walked out. And one little old girl who was noted for having a very messy desk, she told everybody, she said, I'm going to win that prize. She said, they said, how do you know? She said, I'm this morning. He, she said, I'm going to straighten up my books. I'm going to put my pencil eraser up here out there. I ain't my pocket book on the back of my seat. And I'm going to have my, de uh, my desk, everything nice. And if he don't come, I'll win the prize. And they said, well, what if he comes at lunchtime when you don't mess it up again? She said, I know what I'll do. And when it's time come, I'm going to put all my books and straighten them up over here, put my pencils and erasers up there, and hang my pocket book on the back of my seat, and I'm going to, I'll be ready. And I'll have it clean if it comes at lunchtime. They said, but what if it comes at evening at about 3 o'clock before we go? She said, I know what I'll do. I'll put all my trash in trash can, put my books and notes in the seat, put my pencils and erasers up here, and hang my pocket book on the back of my seat, and I'll be ready if it comes at 3 o'clock. Somebody said, but what if it comes between 12.30 at three o'clock, she stopped for me and she said, I'll just keep it clean. That's some good advice. Right? You know how to be ready to leave the Lord? Keep it clean! Keep it clean! Don't just get right for a dive on and go right back to the same old thing two days later. Amen! Amen! Don't come to all these every camp and say, Lord, I want to live for you, and then go listen to Haley Roll. That popped out too. He needed that hot and raw. Uh, listen, listen, buddy. Hey, don't don't say, Lord, I'm going to live for you. And then you're right back to the same old thing. Keep it clean. We're waiting for his coming. But then I want to say, secondly, tonight, chapter 2, we are rejoicing at his coming. Now, what are we going to rejoice about when we see the Lord come? You know what Paul said? He said, you people, you are our joy and our crown. He probably preached revival down there in Thessalonica. Had a bunch of people get saved. And he said, I'm going to shout over you. When I get to heaven. And the song says, when we see the souls that we have helped to win. Right. Lead them to Jesus from the past of sin. Amen. With a shout of welcome, we'll all march in. Right. So what? Keep on, right? Get on fire line. And that's what we want to do. We want to be rejoicing at his coming. Amen. Years ago, I had this uh, guy, I led this guy to the Lord at the flea market. And uh, his name was Buddy. And he had a very strong British accent. I couldn't hardly tell what he was saying. And me and him, I just gave him a track and started witnessing to him. And we sat down on the back of uh, the tailgate of the truck and, and, and talked. And I prayed with him and he got saved. Well, I got his, I got his uh, phone number and address. And I thought, I'm going to stay in touch with you, buddy. And I called him a couple of times. And about two weeks later, three, I called him. I said, buddy, uh, I'm going to meet you down there taste free somewhere. Maybe we'll get a sandburn and we'll talk. He said, okay. Preacher, we'll do it. So I met him uh, down, down in Morgan. There, uh, y'all know where the Maple Leaf Taste Free used to be a long time ago. And uh, I said, How you doing, brother? He said, I'm doing fine. I said, Now, buddy, you need to witness. You need to tell all your friends about Jesus. Everybody you know, your mama, your daddy, you need to tell everybody about Jesus. You never know. You never know. One of these days, somebody might have walked up to you right out of clear blue. And say, because you witnessed to me, yeah. I got saved yeah. and went to heaven. And unto the Lord with my hand to heaven, people. I hadn't got them words out of my mouth. Then there's a guy punched me on the shoulder. And I said, hey, Lord. He said, uh, you're a preacher, ain't you? I said, yes, sir, I sure am. He said, do you remember me? And I said, no, sir, I sure don't. He said, a couple of years ago, he said, I was going to hitchhiking out here in the rain one night. And you pulled over and stopped and you had a little Volkswagen. I did have a little bitty red Volkswagen way back then. And he said, you had a little Volkswagen.
wagon and you witness me? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I just want to tell you. He said, that bothered me. And he said, me and my mama went to church that Sunday, that Sunday morning following, and both of us gave our life to the Lord. And so, they, and I, I don't buddy now, I've got about that big around. He went, oh, hey, wait, wait. And, I, and he, listen, I, I, I want to go, Woo! but I didn't want him to think, that's the first time that ever happened, which it was. And I, day, man, you know? I, I, and, and, I, and I said, glory to God, brother, hallelujah. And I thought about that. And I thought about Brother Rodney and y'all, brother, brother Mary, uh, Brother Chris, Brother Danny, all them tracks we get. Lord, I'd give out tracks everywhere from, from here to California, back to New York and Florida. I'd put them in them. I'd put them in train places. I'd put them in airplane seats. I'd put them in the pockets of blue jeans. I'd put them in everywhere, everywhere. I'd say, listen, we don't know. That old book said, cast your bread upon the water. But thou shalt find it after many days. And one of these, I'm telling one of these days, somebody will run up and say, Praise God, preacher. I sure do appreciate you. I used, I used to take these little stickers called No Water in Hell. And No Water in Hell, that's the name of it. It's rough too, buddy. I mean, No Water in Hell, big river. And I think you peel them off and they stick. And I take them to the airport and I put them on the water fountain right there. And I'd go over here like this and just sit there and watch some big hot shot business man come out of his briefcase, thought he's hot stuff, you know. And boy, he'd come down to there and he'd look over and he'd go, Look, I can't do this because you didn't give me any water. I said, get him, boy. Get him. Get him. I, I, I stabbed him. Let them, let them uh, uh, Holy Ghost conviction prick that heart. And if you don't know, stay after him, y'all. Stay after him. Everybody here. You know what everybody here ought to do? Everybody here ought to put two side, two hours aside tomorrow morning. We're going and tomorrow afternoon, sometime tomorrow, and just take some tracks and put them out in front of Walmart, everywhere you go. Hey, come after you, lady, man. I ain't tired of hearing lady in church say, well, preacher, the reason I watch them old soap prophets, I know they ain't good, but I just ain't got nothing to do. I'm bored. I think being bored is bigger sin watching soap operas for a Christian. Wow. Yeah. Christians ain't supposed to know what bored yeah. is. Amen. I ain't never been bored in my life. I'm, well, I have one time. Only time I ever get bit bored was I had to go to a Lamaze class. Lord, that's a torture. I thought I could die. And uh, I couldn't wait for to get over it. When they're talking about having babies and stuff, I thought, Lord, I didn't die. I have no baby. I what I'd do then. And it was all. But other than that, I ain't been bored since I've been saved. There's always something to do. There's always yeah. somewhere to go. Can I help you with that, ladies? For all you ladies that sin because you're bored, here's what you do. Monday, when the kids are in school, you take your car. Ah, we're going to the grocery store. All right, we got that so far? I got you, I got you. I hope you can be more. All right, walk in, park your car, get out, walk in, and go down that fruit aisle, and you get some bananas, get some apples, and get some uh, tangelos, and get some grapes, and get some grapefruits, or get some, or come out and some nuts, and you put it in your body. All right. Do I need to go over this again? You know, I have no excuse now. Now, then you go down this other aisle and go to Ingalls. I don't y'all have any. Ain't no Ingalls up there. They're just from, from up down there. Uh, but anyway, go to Publix or whatever you're going to charge you $3 more for the same thing. And you go in there and say, hey, then you get some saran wrap. You take that saran wrap and put it in your buggy. Any questions so far? All right, all right, we got this. All right, everybody got the heart. Put the shred up, then you go and stick. No, you take it through the line and pay for it. Then you take it out, roll it over your car, and open the door, put it in the back seat, safe and sound. Then you drive home. You take it in your house, put it on the counter. Then you got these. You get one of these baskets about this big. And you put some uh, little grass in there, like they put in, in the Easter basket, you know, grass with and stuff. Put that down in there. Put you some fruit. Put you some apples. Put you some orange. Put your tangelos. Put your grapefruit. Put uh, put your nuts. Put the raisins all in there. Then this is hard now. You take the saran wrap, pull it out, and wrap it around that time or two. Then you put it back in the car. 
and you drive to one of the at least five rest homes that are within 20 minutes of your house. At least. Here, more than probably 50. And then you get out of the car. You take them out. You're out of here. I got with one right there. I made this one. Here I go. You say, well, I don't know nobody. It don't matter if you know them. All you got to do is walk down the hall, look in that room, walk in, look in that room, <laughs> look in that room, and there you'll see her. She's about 80 years old, and you know how you know you're supposed to go in there? Because she ain't got no cards on the wall. And she ain't got no pictures of grandkids. And nothing. They, listen, there's thousands of them. Yeah. That sit in there day after day after day after day, and not one blessed person comes to see you. Listen, don't brag to me about what you don't do. Let's see these bad I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't smoke, I don't chew, I don't do what they do, I don't go to movies, I don't run. Well, hey, people down there in funeral homes don't do none of that stuff. Yeah. Hey, people down there don't smoke, don't cuss, don't drink liquor, don't smoke pot. I don't know. But then ain't, being a Christian ain't just what you don't do. Right. Yeah. That's just how I go. Let's get your sorry self out and oh. do something. Yeah. All of you. Every one of you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking Frankie. Goes on the bus about every Saturday. Yeah. He does. He'll go to one once you bring. And he's a good bus worker too, buddy. And Marty. And everyone you say, oh, no, I can't do nothing. You take that thing and you go in there and say, hello, I'm from Oak Grove Baptist Church. Or I'm from Shining Light Baptist Church. Or I'm from South Ridge Baptist Church. Or I'm, I'm from, uh, or, and, and I just want you to know that we're praying for you and we love you. What's your name? How, how long have you been here? All right. Is there anything you need? Can I pray with you? Amen. Any questions so far? And you leave it in there, and you get her name, and you go home, and then you go home. By the time you get home, it's time to start supper for the ovens. Then we come home from school. And you wait there at night and say, Lord, bless, bless oh, Miss Mason, bless Miss Johnson. And Lord, bless you get a burden for it. You don't never know, buddy. You just don't ever know. Do something for God, people. Do something for God. Yeah. Hey, one person in here, I don't care how. You say, oh, brother, I can't afford to go. To, you got a phone? You got a phone? You can afford to buy the phone or free. Yeah. You got a phone. Everybody in here has got a phone. <laughs> don't give me that stuff. Hey, if somebody got you a phone, you can just go down there and make up numbers and call them and say, this is a friend of Jesus. And I'm just calling you to tell you, that, look, you can do something. You're just too sorry. That's why you won't do that. Yeah. You're just too sorry. Yeah. Thanks, man. Concerned about yourself. Come on. Hey, nobody in here that couldn't do something for God. Yeah. Well, wish you had one day. You say, well, brother, Daddy, you're hurting my feelings. I ain't got nobody in mind. Two fits where. I, it ain't my fault. You don't do nothing. You know, I, listen. Listen. Yeah. Hey, hey. Do something for God, John. Yeah. Do something for God. Yeah. Amen. Good. Yeah. That's right. Good. I heard this little boy. This is a true story. Up there where we live, Sunday school class teacher. She had a little boy named Jocelyn. He's about five years old. In class, she said, Now, boys and girls, I have talked to Glesson this morning on doing something for others. Can anybody tell me what you're going to do for others? Little boy named Josh, she raised his hand and said, I know. She said, Okay, Joshua, what can you do for others? He said, I help Daddy clean up the yard. Oh, that's good boy. That's a good boy. Good boy. Now, anybody else have anything that you He raised his hand again. I know. She said, What else do you know, Joshua, that you can do? He said, I can help Mommy clean up the house. Oh, that's good. She said, good boy, good boy. That's a good boy, Joshua. Now, does anybody else, you may say, I know. She said, what else do you know, Joshua, that you can do good? He said, don't eat boogers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just cracked up. The teacher, that's a good son, that. That's a good son. That, you know, he'd been picking his nose, and his mom been, <laughs> been fussing at him out. But look, can you not think of something you can quit? If you can't think of nothing else, come up here and ask God to forgive you for eating bugs. Short of God, you can think of something you can give up. Oh, yeah. Get up here and say, God, I'll never eat another in my 
blood is no good. God save me. Yeah. Jesus said, when he rose to the dead, he had no blood. But he said, a spirit hath not flesh and bones like you see me have. Right. So your spiritual body has flesh and bones glorified and no blood. Yeah. Your blood's no good. Yeah. So, I don't know this, but if the Lord come right now, oh. you'd be about 10 or 15 of you people still sitting in here. And you look around, you just see an old pile of clothes. Oh. You'd see this orange jacket. You'd see bunch of shoes, fault teeth, wigs, ain't no telling what else we want on that. <laughs> Lay it in the floor. <laughs> Lay it in the floor. Amen, right. hey, brother. He's like, oh, you talk about Friday 13th, son. You talk about scream and hokey pokey or whatever it is. And uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen no scary yeah. things like that. That tribulation you're yeah. made. But you talking about all hell breaking loose. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be bad. But that verse said he delivered us from the wrath yeah. to come. Yeah. We have the promise yeah. that it's not. That wrath will be poured out on us. We will escape that wrath and go home to be with the Lord. And we are to be caught up. And you're going to pass your lead. So I'm going to wait till I see him coming. I'm going to get down with him. Oh. Come on. Twitch one over now. Yeah, that's right. You know, Pastor is, I read that the blinking, like that blink, <coughs> is one fifth of a second. Okay. And the average person blinks 25 times a minute. Now, some people, uh, <laughs> there's some wrong with Normal people <laughs> blink 25 times a minute. Show you how slow that is. That means if you drive a 10 hour trip here down to Tampa somewhere, Florida, and you blink 25 times a minute, and you got, you're going 55 miles an hour, you drive 33 miles with your eyes shut. Right. One of those many people get killed. Man, drive down the road 33 miles with eyes shut. I about went to old 33 miles up before. Oh, the grace of God got me. I mean, that's how that's how slow blinking is. It's a twinkling. You ever say, well, like Santa Claus got a twinkle in your eye like that? Illustrate. Somebody tell me how fast light travels. You know how fast light travels? No, boys. Homeschoolers, I'm assuming. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Somebody tell me how fast. Anybody? 186,000 186, miles of blessings. Because you didn't know how fast you knew. Lord, where do you go to school at? I'm a hick from the mountains and I don't know how fast life goes. 186,000 miles a second. Now, either way you cut the cake, brother, that's moving. Yeah, right. All right, well, you ready? Go to the Lord, get set, go. Stop. 186,000 miles. You know what we call that home in the mountains? Swoof. <laughs> that is getting with it, brother. Now that means this. If I could take a gun and hold it chest high, a rifle, and the world was just completely round, no mountains or nothing like that, it was all a slick ball. If I could fire that gun at the speed of light, bam! That bullet would travel around the circumference of the world all the way down here and, there and back to right here and go through my body seven times before I can fall over. That's moving, brother. That's moving. I'm done here. Bam! <laughs> That's the speed of light. And the Bible said, you know they say, did you know they say if you could travel the speed of light that you would never age? Because time don't, time don't, it don't get you to stay sane. Isn't that weird? Maybe that's why we have eternal life. Never, maybe, I don't even know tell what God's going to do up there that we don't know about. That's how fast we're going to be. Bam! We'll be caught up. And he's coming. Are you ready tonight? Are you ready right now where you sit? If Jesus come back in the next five minutes, would you be ready? No, no, no Lord, please, no, please, no, hey, you better get ready. Chapter five, I'm through. 
We are to be sanctified unto his coming. Now listen to all those things there. Verse 11, verse 12, verse 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I'll read them all to you and I'm through. Edify one another. Not criticize, not talk about. Edify. Do everything you can to build up your brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't sit around and run your mouth about them. Try to help them. Amen? Support the elders. You know, the elders in church here tonight is the pastor. But you are supposed to support your pastor. You know, people now, they say, well, we don't believe in uh, going to uh, an organized church and somebody up screaming and yelling. We just sit over at my house and we have a Bible study. And he says what he thinks and she says what she thinks. And, and we just say, yeah, I bet you do. I bet you can't stand authoritative Bible preaching. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what God wants you to have. Yeah. God's got this thing designed so that the man of God takes that book and opens something supernatural about it, y'all. There's something supernatural when a person gets hooked up just right. Not the preacher, the preaching. The preaching. Ain't nothing special about us. But when a preacher gets hooked up right, there's something supernatural. The Holy Ghost goes out in the church and meets the needs of people all over the world. Support them elders. You support him with your prayers. You support him with your presence. And you support him with your pocketbook. That's a whole sermon. I said, you support him with your prayers. He ought to be the first on your prayer list. Right, other than your immediate family. Yes, right. Your pastor. Support him with your presence. Yes, be here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, revival night. Amen. You support him with your pocketbook. Yes, hey, I'm preacher, I just don't give. I know a lot of Christians have to go to the hospital and have their tithes took out. And he said this, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. There's people that don't, their mind's not exactly right there. You're supposed to be good to people like that. Comfort them. Take care of them. My, uh, uh, my wife over there, she gets the people, Lord, we pick up people hitchhiking. We pick up homeless people. We, and I mean, they're feeble-minded, brother. Some of them about fried. I mean, they don't know where they're coming or going. They don't know what, what day it is or nothing. And the Bible says it's a comfort people out there. You been doing that? Comfort the feeble-minded. And then it said rejoice evermore. Every Christian ought to rejoice every day of your life. A strong Christian is a happy Christian. The joy of the Lord is your what? Strength. You know why you're weak? Because you're miserable all the time. You know why you're miserable all the time? Because you let the devil point out the bad stuff and quit looking at the good stuff that God's done. Yeah. Listen, the devil's doing plenty, but we're to keep our eyes on the good stuff that yeah. God's doing yeah. and rejoice evermore. Yeah. Listen, you can name it in the book of life, ain't it? Shout every day of your life. Yeah. It don't matter how bad it gets down here, go to God. Hey, that ain't going to change. The devil ain't got a eraser big enough to get rid of that name in that book. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Then he said, pray without ceasing. You want to be ready to Lord? Pray without ceasing. Now what does that mean? Obviously, obviously, we don't we don't uh, go down the street praying all the time. But it says, remain in an attitude of prayer. Yeah. So, when you're driving around, Lord, today, Lord, you shouldn't just be one little time you talk to God every morning and forget it till the next day. Right. You're being continually, yeah. continually, yeah. while you're cooking, while you're washing them dishes, while you're folding that ironing, uh, why, why you're just, the Lord, help me today. God, help me do this. Lord, you sure have things to me. Lord, I'm, people think you're crazy. I mean, they do. You want to talk to me, sir. But they don't know no better. We're, a Christian is a perfect schizo. Yeah. We're, we're two people. Yeah. I'm a good man living in a bad body. Yeah. He's a good man in there, but his old body here is bad. Uh -huh. We're schizophrenic right. by the world's definition. Yeah. They're not them two schizos that got on the elevator one day. And they got on there one said, I'm still a little schizo today. <laughs> That's the way we are. Your, 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 your flesh wants to do wrong and your spirit wants to do right. How many of y'all know the battle I'm knowing about right now? Yeah. Of course you do. Yeah. This old stinking flesh, it ain't 
wants to do, it wants its way, it wants to be petted, it wants to be uh, pampered and took care of, it wants to convert. But something inside you saying, no, 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 live right, serve God, right. pray fast, live for God, go to church, go to Sunday school, get your kids in Sunday school, go to revival meetings, uh, support the, the work of God. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Pray without well, ceasing. And then he said, quench not the spirit. That's right. Don't be a spirit quencher, brother. Pour, pour gas on the fire. Right. Despise not prophesy. Look, I wouldn't give you a dime for a preacher that preached every Sunday and never did hit me. Come on. What good is that? Yeah, right. You ought to be glad. He said, well, he just, every time he gets up there, he goes, bless. Good. That's what he's supposed to do. Come on. If he don't hit you, he can't help you. A guy came to me one time and he said, Boy, you stepped on my toes tonight. And I said, Well, I missed about that far. He said, What do you mean? I said, I'm aiming for your heart, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to step on your toes. I'm aiming for that heart. Yeah. That's what I'm aiming at in you tonight. Yeah. We are, brother, we are to not despise prophesying. Yeah. We're to say, Hey, I might not like it, and it might have hit me, but if a man of God said it, and he backs it up with Scripture, I'm going to swallow it and get closer to God, yeah. so I won't have so much to give account for to judge yeah. on these days. He said, prove all things. How you going to do that? With the book. Yeah. You take that King James Bible, and if it don't line up, throw it out. Right. Right. Listen, I know where I'm at. Yeah. We're in Charlotte. Yeah. There's a lot of church down here. That don't line up with that book. Yeah. That's some crazy preachers down yeah. here. Lord, that one has got over here. Good night in the morning. I don't, I don't see how, I don't see how man people could fall for junk like that. I mean, you check it out. Prove all they don't say. Well, I know what I felt, my grandma. I know what I felt. You better check it out by what that book says. Yeah. You might be feeling something wrong. Right. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And then finally, he said, abstain from all appearance of evil. Everybody. Yeah. Rock concert. Rap music. Right. Yeah. Oh, Hollywood movies. Yeah, Abstain. Okay. He said, I'm not willing to do that. Okay, I'll see it in judgment. But you're going to be in trouble. Amen. You know how to live in the light of the Lord's return? Get your act together tonight. Yeah. This is a special service here tonight. The devil done everything he can to stop us. We had to have people come from the and near us, go back, turn around, go back. People, I don't even know how we all got in here tonight. We had about four, 35 or 40 of us. We crammed in cars and got here. The devil didn't want this to happen. Right. There's somebody in here tonight that ain't made any fool. Tonight ought to be your night. Ought to be your night. I tell you what, let's do. Look at where you at. Come back up here. I'm going to ask him to, to pray. Some of y'all girls come back up here. Get behind this pulpit. You don't have to all that. That's eight or ten of you. Come on, some of our girls. Y'all girls. And I want us to stand with our head bowed and our eyes are closed. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. You want this from here, brother? And I want to sing that song, Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. One second. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Young man, are you here tonight? You hear tonight, young man, young lady, you say, Brother Danny, when you was talking about Jesus coming back, it scared me. I, I went to high school, I went to college, and I, I worked with my people said, that's great, but deep, deep down inside, I know it's right. And I know he's coming back. Yeah. We, got a, we got the altar full up here right now. Maybe you're back there in the back. Maybe you're with us. Maybe you're rocking him. Maybe you're from this church of Oak Grove. Maybe you're just a visitor here tonight. I don't know. Would you let the Lord speak to your heart? Yes. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost, that you take these few words of exhortation and bring conviction upon the hearts and lives of every person in this room tonight. Dear Jesus, move it here tonight. God, please touch every single heart and every single life. If there's one here tonight not saved, touch that young man, young, young lady, save him tonight. But let mom and dad. Well, thank you for it. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Go ahead and sing that first verse. God speak in your heart. Amen. You need to come.